At least 11 people from the same family have been killed in a Saudi-led coalition airstrike in Yemen. These are the latest pictures from the western city of Taiz. Smoke can be seen from the airstrikes there. For the past year and a half now, that city has been torn between coalition-backed forces and Shiite rebels known as Houthis. As the civilian death toll mounts, UN agencies have gathered data on the human cost of that war. The World Food Programme says the situation in Yemen is shocking and horrible. Indeed, 7 million Yemenis are currently in desperate need of food. That's while UNICEF warns that 370,000 children are at risk of severe malnutrition. The latest briefing on the issue came after disturbing pictures of an emaciated teenager were released. This is Saida Ahmed Bagili, an 18 year old girl. I had stumbled there to say that this lady is 18 years old, suffering from severe malnutrition. She's one of over 14 million Yemenis suffering from food shortages. The UN says that the ongoing fighting between Saudi led coalition forces and the Iran backed Houthi movement has put the country on the brink of famine. Let's bring in now Benham Kosheshem, a uh, Tehran based political analyst, to get his thoughts on what's happening here and where it's going to go. Hi, thanks for your time this weekend. What do you think of the Saudis' role in these atrocities? As we've heard, more and more civilians, it seems, are becoming victims of airstrikes there in Yemen. Uh, thank you for, uh, very much for inviting me. Well, uh, that has been the you know story all throughout the last 18 or 19 months. Uh, you know, uh, they have formed a coalition of over 10 uh, countries led by the Saudis in alliance with the United States and Britain. They have imposed a very tight siege on Yemen. Millions of people are starving to death, and they are also launching uh, air campaigns every day. Just last month, they killed 900 people or killed and wounded 900 people in a mourning ceremony, and nothing happened. And we all remember that the Saudis acknowledged to the crime and saying that, that they have done a mistake. They have been bombing uh, the doctors without borders, hospitals like the Americans. The situation for those of your viewers that might not be very much familiar with it, um, it, it resembles the situation of the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. Uh, uh, many of uh, these uh, pictures that come out vary, of course, rarely. They, they uh, resemble the kind of conditions that Palestinians experience uh, all uh, throughout these years uh, in the Gaza Strip, where the Israelis attack Palestinians. So the Saudis uh, have imposed a very tight siege uh, uh, in the air and on the sea, and they do not let any kind of uh, humanitarian aid to go there. Even uh, when they were provided with the coordinates of Doctors Without Borders, uh, hospitals and missions in Yemen, uh, they uh, very purposefully bombed those places and Doctors Without Borders had to leave Yemen. Uh, the internet infrastructure, nothing is working pretty well. People, uh, you know, every day since they wake up, they stand in long queues for drinking water. They don't have anything to eat, the, let alone drugs and medicine. So. The situation is catastrophic, and they are under constant bombing by the Saudi-led airstrikes and the sophisticated technology weapon systems provided by the UK and the United States, including banned munitions, depleted uranium uh, uh, bullets, as well as uh, cluster bombs. You mentioned just now uh, your thought about a, a, a lack of punishment for some of the alleged atrocities that are taking place here. Human Rights Watch accused the Saudi-led coalition of war crimes following an airstrike on that funeral in Yemen that took over 150 lives. The Saudis got to stay nonetheless on the UN Human Rights Council after a vote yesterday. Was that just? Was that fair? You know, it's ridiculous when you see uh, the Saudis uh, are uh, a high-ranking member of the Human Rights Commission of the United Nations, they are in the executive committee. You know, when there are reports of violation of human rights, grave violations, they are introduced to that committee, and they should decide which report uh, it needs more work and should go under investigation. And the Saudis stand atop that committee, and they chair the committee, and always, when there is a report on their atrocities, they escape unpunished and, and nothing happens because they say that uh, this report 
is not well enough or qualified for our further investigations at the UN Human Rights Committee. You know, it shows, it, uh, it's another, uh, you know, piece of evidence showing that the United Nations and its uh, relevant bodies have unfortunately become a kind of toy in the hands of the United States and its allies. Just uh, several months ago, we all remember that the Saudis and their uh, coalition against Yemen, they were named in a list of the child uh, rights abusers, but they threatened the bank, uh, Ban Ki-moon, the young chief, uh, to withdraw their money and budget. Um, mm -hmm. And, and Ban Ki-moon ad admitted that he had to exclude their names from that list of uh, the violators of child's rights. So that's uh, the, the life in the 21st century where the United States and its allies do whatever they want to do. And ben, through their mainstream media in the West, they do what uh, uh, they think is fit. Ben, and we got to leave it there. Thank you for giving us your thoughts on this awful situation ongoing in Yemen. There, We just, just saw the state of that 18-year-old lady just now. Terrible thing to see. Ben, of course, Tehran-based political analyst, thank you.